Temptation of the Force by Tessa Grattan is the latest novel in Phase 3 of The High Republic. It comes out on June 11th, but I got a chance to read it a little early, so here are my spoiler-free thoughts on the book. In short, I liked it. Not as much as Light of the Jedi or The Rising Storm, but those remain two of my all-time favorite Star Wars books. The reason I love The Rising Storm so much is because of its heart-pounding conclusion, and I will say that there are several moments throughout Temptation of the Force that brought me back to that feeling, which I love and hate. There were moments where I was terrified to keep reading because because I saw so many awful potential possibilities for the characters, but of course I had to find out what was going to happen next. There were two specific extended action sequences that had me filled with anxiety in the best way. The action was clear, well-written, and cinematic. I've always found it easy to visualize the excitement in the High Republic novels. The cast of characters for this book is also wonderful. I said in my review for Defy the Storm that I prefer reading about the Jedi of this era, and that book was more focused on the non-Jedi. Temptation of the Force is is the opposite. We've got Avar Chris, Elzar Man, Vernestra Rowe, Belzedifar, Buryaga, and more, and some solid non-Jedi characters that popped up again from Defy the Storm, like Xylan Graf, Avon Staros, and Kaer Santeca. All characters that I already liked, but getting to see them swept up in a larger scale story was great. Temptation felt like a direct continuation of Defy the Storm and made me appreciate that book more. I feel like the adult novels have historically been a little more disconnected from the young adult or middle grade books, but this time it felt like a culmination of everything that's been going on and not just the supposed adult novel plot lines, which I'll admit had some pros and cons. As someone who is reading all the High Republic stories, it was great to see that level of connectivity, but I also thought Temptation had to spend some time covering familiar territory to make sure all readers were on the same page. Defy the Storm introduced us to a mysterious blight spreading across the galaxy, and then Temptation of the Force also had to reintroduce the blight for people who may have skipped the young adult book, and I felt like a lot of time was spent on that. So for me, the pacing of the story felt a little slow in the first half. Things really picked up in the second, which, to be fair, is a similar structure to a lot of the High Republic novels. The Rising Storm also took a long time to set up all the pieces, and then once the action started, it did not let up. Temptation of the Force had more rising and falling action, but those slower moments still gave me plenty of emotional action. The cover of the book appropriately features Avar Chris and Elzar Man, and they are easily my favorite characters. This is probably my favorite Avar story so far. I've always found Elzar to be very relatable, but Avar has been this larger-than-life character, the hero of Hetzal. That's been part of her character's journey, dealing with that status. This is the most I felt like I understood and related to her. I've said before that I'm not much of a shipper, but the Eye of Darkness got me fully shipping Avar and Delzar. Temptation of the Force follows up on their relationship in big, compelling ways. A major theme of this book is about how Jedi grapple with the different kinds of love, romantic love included. Is it possible for a Jedi to love without it becoming selfish or dangerous? Again, everything involving Avar and Delzar made up my favorite moments of the book. On the flip side, Markeon Rowe wasn't as interesting to read about as I usually find him. His story is focused on learning more about the Blight, and there are for sure some interesting developments there, but as a villain, he wasn't as present, which, again, is part of the story, people wondering where he is and what he's up to. How his story ends is compelling and scary and sets up great things for future books, but Temptation of the Force didn't have as much of a clear danger as the other novels. Light of the Jedi had the Great Disaster, The Rising Storm had the attack on Valo, the Fallen Star had the destruction of Starlight Beacon, the Eye of Darkness had the creation of the Stormwall. They all had these major galactic events, and the stories ended with a sense of resolution. Temptation of the Force has the Blight and several dangers that come with it that I won't spoil here, but I feel like the major galactic event was held back for future books. I didn't finish the book with a satisfied sigh of relief, instead it's very much a cliffhanger. I'm positive that was a purposeful choice, because in her acknowledgments, Tessa Grattan said she was asked to make this book like The Empire Strikes Back. We're nearing the end of The High Republic as a publishing initiative. We've got less than a year left and only one more adult novel, Trials of the Jedi. We've also got two more young adult and middle grade books, and there are comics and at least one audio drama, but still, I'm definitely feeling that Star Wars fan thing where we get towards the conclusion of a season of television, for example, and we go, how are they going to wrap this up in just one more episode? But I trust all the authors. I keep laying out criticisms or anxieties I'm feeling, but I'm also able to see how those choices were made with a purpose. And even though I might love that feeling of completing a book and feeling peaceful, I think it's clear the High Republic authors are writing to keep us all on our toes.
shows for months at a time. So yeah, the writing, the action, the characters, I've got no complaints there. Markeon and the Nile in general felt less dangerous this time around, but that will almost definitely change in the stories to come. Temptation of the Force felt a little bit like a bridge to the next big galactic event, but that makes sense given the Empire Strikes Back comparison. Because as I turned the last page, I was immediately desperate to know what would happen next. I recommend this book to High Republic fans, obviously. If you're part of this Star Wars sub-fandom with me, you're already on board. I've got some criticisms of just about every High Republic book, but I'm so into the overall story and characters that I don't see how my enthusiasm could possibly be derailed. If you're not a High Republic fan, I definitely would not consider this a good introduction. I think we're past that. All of the Phase 3 stories have been written more for pre-existing fans, in my opinion. Start with Light of the Jedi instead. It was created to be an introduction to the era. If you want to listen to the audiobook for Temptation of the Force for free, you can on Audible. The audiobook will be out on June 11th, and you can get a credit to pre-order it by clicking on the link in the description or by visiting audibletrial.com slash Star Wars Explained. Or you can get just about any other Star Wars book you can think of. Or get any audiobook you want. The point is, you'll get a free audiobook and you'll be supporting the channel when you do. But that's it for today. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on our socials, and consider checking out our Patreon page, where we'll host a book club for Temptation of the Force Force a few weeks after its release. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.